Malcolm family to help stop the genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, then go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. If you are already subscribed, then please give the video a like and share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. This podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and a written transcript in order for us to reach our audience. I am also I also cite all of my sources under show and prove on my medium page which is where I post my transcript. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ordinary law-abiding citizens an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue during COVID-19. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships and grants, housing and legal services, all for free. We need your help now more than ever. Our film project, Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins, is funded by the Black Grassroots and the Global Black Family. I am working with a shoestring budget as our community continues to grow. Our operational costs will also grow. If you got any value from our content this year, please consider supporting our film project in three ways. They are as follows. Through our virtual store, we provide merchandise such as COVID face masks, coffee mugs, posters, handbags, and t-shirts. All the proceeds will go towards our film project. Two, through our PayPal page, the of Chicago, which is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, is a faith-based community advocacy organization. Donate, donations can be used as a tax write-off for U.S. citizens because this is a legal 501c3 nonprofit organization. Three, you can also support our film project by purchasing my revised book, quote, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, second edition, which is available on my Amazon author page. I provide each website on, on my transcript under show and prove. You can, you can also find each website on my YouTube channel under about section. When you're supporting our YouTube channel or our podcast, you're supporting an independent black network which will eventually employ black people in our films, stage plays, and in our actual business. We're going to start getting things done. We need to own and control institutions in our neighborhoods. If you are un Unable to participate on the show, no worries. After the show, I upload my video podcast on my YouTube channel and on my Anchor page. When you have a moment, please watch my latest video podcast. Leave a public comment on in the section on my YouTube cha- page and on my Facebook page about the topic. Please share my information with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. This is called Side B. You can interact with me in real time either by voice call, by clicking on the 
phone icon or by video call by clicking on the camera icon. I would like to remind our listeners to mark your calendar for November 10th, 2021. We will be celebrating the Grassroots Community Activist Movement 30th Anniversary. If interested in participating on the show, then please send me a message to my Facebook inbox. I have 1,457 people on my Facebook friends list. I pray that God would touch the hearts and minds of people on my friends list and people in my social groups that they would step up and do their part in supporting our film project by sharing our video podcast with their friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Again, this is not my burden alone. This is a shared burden. The best that I can do at this time is to promote our black media component, which is um, the podcast or the video podcast. Without support from the black grassroots and the global black family, I am unable to do my job. Work with me while I am alive. Don't wait until I'm dead to embrace my vision and plan for black America and Africa. With that being said, today's topic, the important, it's time for us to build our own social media. GERCAN, the Grassroots Community Activist Network. The second topic is why... Twitter chose Ghana as a regional hub. And the third topic is, where does ADOS go from here? Before I jump into my presentation, I need to address a certain story that we as black people don't address too often. A twisted so-called brother in Pennsylvania raped a woman on public transit in front of of witnesses, but no one intervened. This is the same nonsense that happened to George Floyd. He was being killed in front of people and no one intervened. It's really hard for me to continue living in a country where people value animals over human beings. Um, we as um, I'm going to just say we as black men, you know, we have to do better at trying to protect our women and our children. And that's what we're going to um, teach uh, our people uh, in this organization once I am able to get it up and running here in Chicago. Next month will be 30 years that I have been pushing my vision to black America. Now I am reaching out to the global black family to help help me raise funds for my film project so that I can move our organization to the big screen in order to reach the masses and start getting things done started here in Chicago. If the CAM members are serious about building our own social media, then we need content creators among us to step forward. The, sh the show that you watch on cable or on internet they are approved, written, and funded by the financial elites. This is why it's important for us to create and build our own institutions. When you own and control your own network, you are independent of the financial elites. They have no leverage over you, and that kind of autonomy is a threat to the power that be. A few weeks ago, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp was temporarily shut down. According to T KTC News report, the explanation for the technical glitch ranged from conspiracy theories that governments were behind the shutdown. Facebook announced on Monday, October 4th, that the root cause of the outage was a faulty configuration change that changed their was no evidence that user data was compromised as a result. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg used his account to apologize. He said, quote, sorry for the disruption. I know how much you re rely on your, 
on your services to stay connected with the people you care about, unquote. Facebook's total dominance of social media became even more visible. This was the largest outage since 2008. Online companies use Facebook and other social sites to market their products and for customer service. This is a big problem when you consider the fact that Facebook is controlled by one person, Mark Zuckerberg, and he has one billion users, and, and it's growing. Now, we see how vulnerable these systems are to hackers. Hopefully, this was a wake-up call for black people that our future should not be in the hands of one person or one company. Understand that this can be used against the liberation struggle. Digital co colonialism is what African people and black people are facing in this day and age. According to the textbook version, colonialism is when you have a colonist, a host country, far away colonizing a territory, having a legally binding relationship to export resources of the colony for their, ben their benefit as well as controlling internal politics. It's really about control and ownership of someone else's land and resources. Facebook is privately owned and subject to very little oversight. We should understand that these tech companies make, make it convenient it comes with a price. These tech companies figure out a clever way to monetize us as a commodity. Our data is based on our personality, which is your identity. Facebook and other tech companies may be protecting our privacy, but they do not have to protect our personal information to third parties. Our information can be bought and sold to third parties like law enforcement, institutions, advertising companies, and mega corporations. The most successful black organization in America was UNIA, which is the Universal Negro Improvement Association founded by Marcus Garvey. He was deported due to his political views and influence on African Americans. Today, there's, there's a whole set of issues affecting black Americans. The impetus is on us. Many of us focus on COINTELPRO, which is counterintelligence program. Um, it was a series of co covert and illegal projects conducted by the United States Federal Rule of Investigation, which is the FBI, aimed at surveillance, surveillance, infiltration, discrediting, and disrupting domestic black political organizations. But, we, but we're not focusing on how COINTELPRO has been repackaged and rebranded. These are serious things we have to think about if we're serious about our liberation. For example, law enforcement are using data from social media to identify future criminals. Institutions are monitoring social media to control public moods. The surveillance of our lives has become more widely available. This has serious consequences for the way we live both online and offline. We got to stop walking into tra traps. I found an article from The Intercept entitled, quote, Revealing Facebook's Secret Blacklist of, of Dangerous Individuals and Organizations. They have this long list of organizations that Facebook is working with for law enforcement of, the, of potential terrorist groups. Islamic groups, white militia groups. I provide the entire list on my transcript 
Medium page under show and prove. Let me pull up one particular group on that list. They have Grandmaster J organization, um, the NFAC, and that means not the F word around coalition, which is labeled as a black militant group. I've warned black America for, for years. F, NFAC was something to trap black people who have a militant mindset caught up to get them caught up on charges. These organizations was a way to get their names on the watch list. Family, y'all don't walk into situations like that. You should never join militia groups. Many have hidden agendas and sellouts all around them who are in the pockets of the financial elites. They would sell their own mother for money. We should know better from the Black Panther of the 60s. The grassroots community activist movement is about trying to move our virtual Christian socialist organization from behind a computer starting in Chicago. I do this show to encourage my online group members to interact with me in real time to discuss these issues until I'm able to get our film project fully funded and made. I believe our film project is important for our people, otherwise I would not have devoted so much time and en energy towards it. This film would touch on how the system targets the black family and black children. Without black children, we have no future. The other thing that this film would touch on is reconnecting with our co continental um, African brothers and sisters, beginning in South Africa. Finally, this film will focus on the reason I created Kirkham and how the black grassroots and the global black family um, step up to help turn my vision and plan into a reality. It is my hope that everyone who will support this film will gain a lot of knowledge and foresight about connecting with other like-minded black people in, in your community. We have to organize among ourselves and separate from those who mean the community no good. We will raise the bar in America and solve our social problems once and for all. If you would like if you like this topic, please leave a com a comment on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. This, the, uh, the second topic, why Twitter chose Ghana as a regional hub. Jack Dorsey traveled to four African nations, Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Africa, and Ghana. He decided to launch the national headquarters in Ghana. By the end of this century, Africa will be half of the world's population. Any company that understands that the future is Africa understand that they need to get on the continent. Ghana is open to foreign investors. Ghana was the first African nation to launch the year of return. Every nation has two levels of independence. There's an economic independence and a political independence. The economic independence means economically uh, means what you do as a nation, there is little influence from other nations as to what you do with your resources. In contrast, public political independence means the system you set up on how you govern your nation will have little influence from other nations. For example, Twitter might say they don't like Ghana's privacy laws. Ghana would either have to change their laws or face Twitter relocating to another African nation. I believe Africans should be benefiting more than foreigners who come to to their land. Hopefully Ghana would manage the situation wisely by not just allowing foreign foreign investors to come to their shores and benefit more than Ghanaians. Being based and one African nation under the African Fair 
African Free Trade Agreement gives Twitter access to 54 African nations. I pray that Ghana would be able to transfer those skills and develop something indigenous from Africa. So, to make Africa proud. If you like this topic, please leave a comment on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. The third topic, where does ADOS go from here? I strongly believe that Gracam is the best way forward for Black America, Africa, the Caribbean, and Brazil. In America, it's getting more and more dangerous to raise a family. In every city, someone is being killed. You have so-called brothers shooting at each other in public. Black women and, and black boys are coming up missing on a daily basis, and you have people harvest, harvesting organs. Sex traffic is also on the rise. If you want to remain in America, you need to know the facts. Focus, focusing on the pie in the sky is not cutting it. For two and a half decades, I've been trying to find like-minded black people in Chicago and across the United States to work with me and Sister Renee in building infrastructure within the black community. Yet, despite my efforts, I am unable to find qualified black people. Everybody wants to get paid, but don't want to invest in the business. You feel me? All I have is our virtual store, my revised book, and our PayPal page. Other groups have infrastructure that insulates them from harm. This is why my focus is on turning my book into a film so that I can recruit young black people to get involved with this organization because after all it's for them. It's my hope that the black grassroots and the global black family can turn Kakim into our own version of Amazon because Amazon also started online and now Amazon is a global company and they have um, physical buildings called um, the fulfillment centers. And they're doing really well. Ever, ever since Joe Biden has gotten to, gotten into office, many Adolfs, American descendants of slaves, slavery, realized that HR 40 was no longer an issue. They lost the momentum. Furthermore, the organization was co-op co-opted by another black movement called FBA, Net Foundational Black Americans. Also, ADOS allowed xenophobia to take root within their organization, which turned, turned a lot of black people off. They also allowed entertainers to hijack their organization. They did not properly screen people within the organization. Antonio Moore was telling his members to vote Democrat down ballot. He offers no apology for misleading black people. I don't see anything moving black America forward. Black America is fighting on too many fronts. Everybody keep saying get on code but never tells anyone what the code is. And that's what I've been trying to uh, share with my listeners. The code is uh, the grassroots community activist movement and putting, um, practicing economic, um, uh, group economics by purchasing my revised book, by uh, purchasing um, items from our virtual store, or donating directly to our pay PayPal page. And reading, most of all, reading the story. So that way, um, you can have a better idea about what being on code is. That means being on one page, being on one accord, being in agreement. That's what being on code means. Unifying. That's the code. I have 
not heard any of these black organizations say they are going to make Demo the Democrats pay for messing over us. The Biden administration made it clear they are not going to do anything specifically for black people. We could use this time to push the message that we're not voting for Democrats during the next midterm election. That's one way we can send send them a message in order to solve a black in order to solve a, a problem, black America have to admit there is a problem when it comes to our voting practices. We don't talk enough about practicing group economics. And that's the main thing because black people, for I, I say due to this Willie Lynch mentality, want to patronize all these other groups and yet complain that there's no black um, businesses. Well, how can there be black businesses if you if you all ain't going to support us? I've been trying to start a black business again going on 30 years. But hey, this is the results that I'm getting. Just being ignored. People don't, I'm, I'm putting out my information. I'm trying to make myself known. And people don't, um, don't want to uh, participate on the show. And that's free. I'm giving people free airtime to come on here. To promote their businesses. To promote their ministries. But, you know, that's this Willie Lynch mentality. And that's what we want to talk about. That's what we're going to um, have in this film. Directly. Um, how um, declaring war against this Willie Lynch mentality. So that way we can come out of this mindset and have a better future for our, um, our children. The Freeman... Rural Bank was stolen by Congress. Why Black America America don't push for a class action lawsuit? We have other racial groups who is cultivating and taking over. They are going to flourish because they have their own bank backing them. For example, East Indians come here, dominate the hotel industry. Latinos, I would say, let's say, uh, illegal. Latinos who come here dominate the trade industry. The Armenians who are who come here dominate the gas stations. We are living in a false freedom and inf inflation. Since I have little to no support from people in Chicago, I use my show to connect with black people and African people throughout the United States and around the globe. Because I refuse to be ignored. I'm trying to do something positive. You know, for our racial group. So we can quit sitting up here complaining about the government not doing this and that. We have to do what we can uh, within our power. That's what I'm going to teach my members. And again, we have to separate from these people that's um, within our racial group. The, P the Pookie and Ray Rays. We have to separate from them because they're not uh, doing the community any good. And through this organization, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, I want us to be able to, um, once we establish here, we want to be able to launch those African tours. So that way we can make a, a strong connection with our uh, African uh, entrepreneurs on the continent from my friends list through Gakai of Africa. Starting in South Africa. Um, my goal now is to move our virtual organization to the big screen. The proceeds from the film will help me carry out what I've been talking about for the past 29 years. None of my members will never have to endure such foolishness that I had to endure just for trying to do something positive in the black community. Because as far as I'm concerned, at this point in time, I am the business. I am the grassroots community activist movement. Um, all of my uh, active members are cells, but you're neither going to be a healthy cell or a cancer cell. You want to get rid of those cancer cells. Those are the ones that's passive spectators. That's not on, doing anything. They're just here just to be seen. And once we start making money in this business, then they're going to want to come around and want to be a part of us. But, um, like I've been saying from the beginning, I'm screening everyone. Nobody's getting a pass. 
Everybody is going to have to attend our mandatory orientation, sign that um, community um, pledge, and pass our criminal background check, and most of all, submit their um, thumbprint, because we want to make sure we keep tabs on everyone, make sure that people are doing their parts. No freeloader, no freeloading here. And, um, you know, we um, we want law-abiding citizens up in this organization, not people that I don't associate with hardened criminals, urban terrorists, pedophiles, active gang members. Those are not the type of people that's going to be in this organization. We want to separate ourselves from those people because those people mean the community no good. And that's an excuse for road cops to say, hey, all of those people that's in those inner cities, they're all criminals and all that stuff, and that gives them an excuse to continue to kill us. All I'm saying, to really, the solution, bottom line, is the grassroots community activist movement and turning the, um, those ideas that we have in this organization into a reality by building. We have to build the Grassroots Community Activist Institute because that's going to be a physical building that we can be proud of, that we're going to create, not just myself. Also, everyone that's um, active members have a voice. So we want to make sure that we get other people's opinions and the stories. We want to also produce stories um, from uh, our member, active members. We want to, the main thing why we want to do why we want to go into film is because that's how we can reach a lot of people. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people, you know, they don't. Um, a lot of people don't like to read, so you know we have to do it um, virtual um, art, visual arts. I mean. So through a film and eventually, you know, stage plays, that's good as well. Um, but we want to be able to generate capital so that way we can uh, hire professionals, black middle class professionals to help us um, move our organization to be very competitive with um, other organizations, especially in the uh, inner cities. We want to be able to uh, win the hearts and minds of our the black community, because it's going to be at the grassroots level. The, the residents are going to be able to benefit from this, create jobs for local um, residents that's uh, in part of this organization. And um, again, I want to encourage uh, our members to apply for dual citizenship. So that way you have your ticket out of here if you want to, you know, just sick and tired of um, being treated as a second and third and fourth class citizen. I mean, our people have been marching for 53 years, begging the financial elites for freedom, justice, and equality. It hasn't worked. I'm not, I'm not Dr. King, um, and, you know, no disrespect to him, but again, um, Dr. King and, you know, our grandparents got caught up with, you know, integration and all that stuff, and that really, you know, that it helped you know, improve some black people uh, lives here in the United States, but still racism is still, you know, live and well. And so I say, you know, um, we want to be able to recruit the best uh, black farmers. You know, I want to reach out to them. So that way, you know, we can bring um, black farmers to um, the property that we purchase um, on the continent, starting in South Africa. To help farm the land, help um, we want to recruit um, re realtors, so that way um, we could uh, build real estate over there, uh, create nice homes um, for um, our people, but also for um, our middle class people too, because. The ones that's middle class, they're the ones that's going to help uh, help get this organization popping um, on the continent that's, you know, um, in the urban communities. And then the, the, uh, the resources that we uh, generate, the, I would just say the extra um, money that we earn from our business, we can use that to help our brothers and sisters in the rural areas, especially the ones that live in those shanty towns. Shouldn't have to live like 
third, third, fourth, and fifth class citizens in your own country. So, all I'm saying is we want to replicate Rakai of Chicago on the African continent. Everybody's not going to want to be a part of this, and that's fine. We're going to pray for those that are not interested, show them tough love, and keep it moving. And do what we can at the, um, at the grassroots level to help improve the lives of our members. Now, like I say, um, non-black sympathizers, they're welcome to join us, but we're going to make it clear that it's black people's responsibility to build this organization and to control this organization. Because after all, this is for black people. We're not, I'm, I'm not reaching out to um, non-black people. I'm reaching out to black people. Black people are the ones that's giving me the pushback. They're the ones that don't want to work with me. I'm not on here for a popularity contest. I'm just trying to help stop the genocide in American ghettos through this organization. This is what I want to be remembered for. Not for, you know, just uh, a person that's coming online taking being taken as a joke. Again, I put in going on 30 years in this thing. This is my track record, my... um my show. I documented everything I've done uh, when I uh, used to do uh, my street ministry in my revised book. Uh, I have a virtual store where I'm trying to generate uh, capital so that way I, it can help fund you know, our film project. So I'm doing everything within my power. And I know Jesus slash Yahshua he can bless me with the money right now. I w wouldn't definitely have to go through uh, all of this stuff. But again, this is so for his um, glory. Because after all, he's the one that gave me the idea. So I don't claim that oh, all these um, things that I've written and talk about, this is just for me. And I created this stuff myself. He's the one that gave me the idea. So I'm not going to share credit. It belongs to him. And he's the head of this organization, so uh, we're not this. Or we're not just trying to limit ourselves, just placed in a box, just in the four walls of a church. We want to um, make an impact on a um, in the society, and the best way we want to do that is to bring this organization to um, the continent. But. I, I take it personal because he gave it to me and I claim ownership. So I'm not going to sit up here and just, you know, um, compromise. Because if I compromise, I could have been done this years ago, but it would have been a failed organization. So this is humility that I have to go through. Day after day, month after month, week after week, year after year. Just trying to connect with brave and smart people to work with me and Sister Renee so we can get this thing popping. But it is what it is. Because God give us free wills, so, you know. But at least I, I, I did the best that I could. Um, with that being said, if you like this topic... Please leave a comment on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. And with that being said, I'm going to uh, open up the phone lines. I'm going to wait around for about 15 minutes. If I don't have anybody to um, call in through um, Facebook Messenger, then, you know, I just call in tonight. But um, mark my words that um, this organization will and come to pass because... There's so many people that's on the African continent that have talents and skills that's trying to do something, but they're being overlooked as well. They're going through the same foolishness that I'm experiencing. And that's okay. Because thank God for the internet. That way we can still network with each other. On this, organ well, on this show, I don't, I'm not about all that drama. We squash that and, you know, we, we nip that in the bud. This is a drama-free zone. We're about um, problem solving problems in the black community. 
I'm not interested in, you know, all that other stuff about, you know, marching and protesting. If we do protest, it's going to be economic protests, and we're just going to encourage our members not to, you know, uh, patronize a particular store that's in the community that's abusing uh, our people. But, um, like I say, um, if black people in America don't uh, check this um, Willie Lynch mentality head on, then they're going to, black Americans are going to be done in the United States, bottom line. Because you got too many sellouts and um, urban terrorists and just people that's, you know, they just got the complexion, but they're not really black. They hate being black. And, and, and you know, again, that's, that's a spirit. Um, and on the continent, same thing, but theirs is called a um, colonized mindset because they wasn't enslaved, but because they was able to keep on the continent, they were able to keep their culture and language. So that was the main major difference between those of us that were enslaved and those that was colonized. But either way, I want to address those two issues uh, in my films and for us to uh, heal collectively and try to do the best. Uh, black excellence is what we want to promote. And um, also, we don't want any corruption in this organization. That's why I want to have people's thumbprints. If we find out, um, we're going to launch our own investigation and we're going to uh, nip that in the bud real fast. And anybody that tries to change uh, our objectives, they, they will get two warnings. I have written that in the book as well. And the third time that person or persons, they will be placed on our Judas list and they will be barred for life. And this is how I get down. Because I'm not, I'm not on here to be playing games. So, again, with that being said... Uh, the phone lines are now open.